tripod a little higher today so I hope I'm not looking up too much at you but we are going to work on snappy composition book cover and this pattern is found on orangebetty.com and I will make sure to leave a link in the description box for this pattern and then also note that on this pattern that she made this pattern before and then she adjusted and added a zippered pouch and then she made that zipper pouch with vinyl so i am opting to make a back pocket with the zippered vinyl see-through pocket and so it's going to be some differences in the original pattern but when i give you the link the link will take you to the original pattern and then she has links within the original pattern if you want to make any of the changes so i am going to go ahead and tilt you down to my work surface so I can show you the products that I am using. So of course you're going to need to go to orangebetty.com which is the name right here and you're going to have to download your pattern and when you download the pattern there's going to be a link for you to download templates. The templates actually print out on three pages and then I used masking tape to tape my pages together and then I use scissors to cut out my patterns and then you have your flat pattern which is this piece and then you also have a piece for your fleece and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. And then you have a piece that's for lining up to put your snaps on. You have actually two pieces for that to put your snaps into position. You are going to have to use some elastic. I'm using 11 inch pieces of one half inch elastic, which is recommended by the pattern. She also talks about using fold over elastic. I did not have that and don't know exactly what it is that she's talking about. I have generic snaps here and I have a snap setting tool that I use a hammer to set my snaps. I think my snaps got damaged because I hit too hard with the hammer. So I am actually awaiting delivery tomorrow of some different color snaps as well as a snap setting tool. So thinking of tomorrow, that means that this video is going to be going over a number of days because while I can make one cover in a day, I am not going to be able to make seven covers in a day. These are actually going to be retreat gifts, so I'm making multiples of this. And then I use some chalk marking wheel to actually mark my lines where I wanted to put my snaps. You're going to need some composition books. And I'm just using a highlighter on my pattern to highlight any things that are important for me. And then you also need fabric you need to decide if you want your inside and outside to be the same. I am actually doing that. I'm making my inside and outside the same fabric because it was just easier when I'm making seven. And you're going to need some fusible fleece. I'm just using a very thin layer of fusible fleece. So this book here is my test book that I made and it does work. I feel like I can trim out some of the extra seam allowance that's in here but it does fold over pretty good and stay, so I don't think that that's a big deal. So I made my flap one color, and then I made the outside of my book and the inside of my book, which you can't see because the book is in, but I made it the same fabric. And then I made this pocket a different fabric, but on the future ones, I am actually going to make this pocket the same fabric as the outside and inside which is the lining and then on the back instead of making this unit here with a half pocket you can put pins in 
she updated it and made this vinyl pocket with a zipper and you actually have your space to put items and then you can also see them so if you don't make it with vinyl you just won't be able to see it but you can still do the same pocket so that is what we are going to be making so because i'm doing the optional zippered pockets with vinyl you're also going to need some cut pieces of vinyl these are four and a half by 11 and you're also going to need some zippers that are at least 10 inches long in the instructions she tells you everything that you need to cut by size but i am just going to run through it really really fast for your lining and your so your inside and outside piece your inside piece is considered your lining you're going to need 11 inches by 16 and a half inches and again i have a stack here because i'm using the exact same fabric on the lining and the outside and then you also need to have a piece for each cover you need to have one piece of fusible fleece that's 10 by 15 and one half inches so it's actually one inch smaller than your piece here and then you want to fuse this to the back side of the outside fabric so if you're using different fabrics make sure that you add it to the outside fabric and then note here that i have pieces here because i am also using scraps to get rid of those as well so this step will already be done is actually step one so once you cut this just go ahead and fuse this to the front of your to the outside of your composition notebook cover second pieces you're going to need and again i'm using the same fabrics these are your pocket pieces and you need to have this five and a half by 11 and you need to cut two for each composition cover now if you're doing the zipper pocket you need to cut two if you have decided not to do the zipper pocket then you actually need to cut four of these pieces the same size so if you're also doing the pattern that's in the original pattern then you'll need to have an additional accent piece that's 10 by five and a half and that's going to be the pocket where you fold in half so you can insert your pencils but that's the piece that i did not cut and you can see that here where i have an x where i did not need to use this particular piece so let me see if i can zoom the camera in a little more so these are the cut instructions that was printed on the actual template pattern sheet the next thing you're going to need for your bag is that you're going to need to have your flap fabric cut from your template and so i have that here and i also cut these from the same two fabrics and then i just ran out of this print at the end so i just decided to add another piece so one of my flaps will be different and then you also need to cut out a piece a fusible fleece from your flap and again you want to go ahead and fuse this to the outside of your flap so if you cut two pieces of flap for each notebook cover you need to cover one side of each flap additional things that I need because I am making the zipper pocket I need a piece of fabric that is 13 inches by 11 inches you also need a piece of fabric that is 2 inches by 11 inches and then for each one of your covers you need to have two pieces that are 4 inches by 1 and 3 fourths and these are going to cover your zipper and make zipper tabs we already talked about the fact that you're going to need a zipper is at least 10 and a half inches and then we've also stated that we have vinyl that you're going to use if you're making this pocket and the vinyl is four and a half inches by 11 inches so that's it for supplies i'm going to go ahead and fuse everything that i need to fuse and then i will probably go ahead and also sew the first step because i can walk you through that 
do note also that this video is probably going to be over a two or three days because I am not going to rush myself to make seven composition covers in one day. And I'll be right back. I'm back and I have ironed all of my fusible fleece onto the back of my outside piece. And I do want to make an announcement here. I pulled this floral fabric and did not pay attention to the fact that it has a tree in the inside centers of the big floral arrangement. And all of my trees are going to be actually marching sideways. And I am just going to keep going because I have cut like three yards of fabric and have cut it all in the wrong direction. So do as I say on this and not as I do. And so I got that on just the front outside, I mean the outside pieces, not the front. I keep saying the front because I think of it as a front and back with the lining. So this is actually my front piece. And then I also got the fusible fuse to the back side of my outside flap as well but in addition to that I decided to go ahead and put initials on these since they were all going to be the same except that I ran out of this fabric for mine and so I decided to go ahead and put everyone's initial on it so we would know whose cover is whose so now we're ready for the next step and we are now going to work on our left pocket. And so for the left pocket, we're going to take two of our five and a half by 11 inch pieces. On one of them, we're just going to fold in half so that we can find the centers on your short sides. And then I want to just center my elastic over that section. And I like to use pen to hold it. You can use some clips if you want. And then after that, I just go and sew one quarter of an inch to hold this elastic down. For this part here, we're just basting. So all of your basting is going to be at a quarter of an inch and then your actual seams on this pattern are one half inch so I've already done that with a different pair <laughs> so here I have already basted the top edge down and I just have my thread hanging for right now it's not critical and on this I do notice that my tree is again has a top and a bottom so I will make sure that I orientate that the correct way I want to put my other pocket piece right sides together and I want to sew along the right hand side make sure you sew along the right hand side especially if you have directional fabric so that your trees will not be upside down or marching sideways like mine so once you've done that I have that here where I have already sewn the seam. You're going to go to your iron and you're going to press this seam open first. It just makes it easier for it to lay nice and flat. And then once you press it open, you want to then press this unit flat like that. And I have one that I have already done here. Now just to put them into a place, uh, you are actually going to just pin these onto the left side of your lining. This is the piece that does not have the fusible fleece on it. And now I need to make the other pocket on this side, but I did not make two of these. Normally you would make two because I am going to do the zipper pocket. So we're going to now start on the zipper pocket. So the first part of the zipper pocket is that we're going to take our 2 inch by 11 inch piece and we're going to actually fold in half. And we're going to do this with our iron so that we can see the press mark. And I have done that with this piece here. And then once you have it folded in half, you open it up and you want to use that 
press mark to fold both sides of your center to the fold mark that we just pressed. And you do that all the way down your strip. And you will end with a strip set like this where both of your edges are pressed into the center. Once they're pressed into the center, next step is to just press it in half. Basically, you're just enclosing your raw edges on the inside so that you have two folds on the outside which you will have something that looks like this. So this is my piece opened, and then this is how I pressed it in half. We wanna actually take this piece and attach it to our four and a half by 11 inch piece of vinyl. And so I just slide it into the vinyl. And I start at the bottom edge and this is where using the wonder clips are great because if you pin this you're actually going to put holes in your vinyl and you don't want that and i like to stop about two and a half to three inches from the top when i'm pinning so that when i first start i don't have sewing i don't have to worry about bumping into this wonder clip right away also another tip is that I use the paper side down on a piece of freezer paper and I don't slide it up to where I'm stitching because I don't want to stitch on the paper because I don't want to pull it out but I just lay it real close like say a quarter of an inch away and it keeps it from sticking to the machine bed. So I just take this and sew this with a seam close to the edge but you don't want to be too close to the edge that you cannot catch the underside then once that's done this is how your piece would be and i'm just holding this up because you won't be able to see the vinyl if i don't have my hand under it and then i've got my stitching where i've stitched on the front and it also caught the back side of it as well so just make sure that you are catching both sides of your seam when you do that. So our next step is a little complicated to me because I don't understand what she wants me to do. And so I've just done what I think I'm supposed to do. So next we want to make a zipper tab. And so I'm going to make my zipper tab. She says fold in half short ways. I'm not sure if this is the way she wants us to fold it or if she wants us to fold it this way. I have no idea. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold it this way. And then she just says press under 3 8 of an inch on both of the short edges. I'm going to again assume that this is what I'm supposed to press under 3 8 of an inch. And I am just finger pressing this for right now. And then once I fold the one side down, I just go back and fold the other edge down. So I know that I have already told you how we're going to make these tags. But as I was working on them, I realized that I apparently don't understand the instructions very well. And there are no actual pictures of the process of making the tabs. She just shows you the finished tab and it looks like it has raw edges to me. And I'm not certain. So I have been playing around with different ways to make the end tabs. And here I have a tab. See if I can put it up close to you. I'm hoping you can see I stitched a U around this particular tab and then I also have another tab here where I figured out how to fold it and just stitch across the tab so I've only stitched across the bottom so I like this method where I only stitched across the bottom better I've already put this on the top half of my zippers though, so they will be staying as is and I will be modifying the bottom tab to this. So let me show you what I did to make this tab.
So you start with your zipper and you want to pull your zipper open just a couple of inches. It doesn't take a whole lot. And then when we folded this, according to the instructions we had folded or what I think the instructions were saying, that's the problem. I don't understand which way I'm supposed to fold. I had you just fold both ends and then she says wrap around the zipper well when you wrap around the zipper you have raw edges so what I did was I went back opened up one side because if I'm wrapping around the zipper I only need a fold on one end and that will reduce some of the bulk and I pressed up a seam so that I would have a raw edge on the bottom of the zipper when I wrap around so I have a fold here and here I still have my center fold mark because I am going to be actually trimming this off I'm gonna trim off I'd say about a half inch of this and it's just approximate because I don't need it to wrap it's going to overlap that's all I need and now once I've done that, I'm just going to stick a little glue in the middle with my glue stick. I can stick a little glue on the end and then I can stick it on the edge with the fold. Now I'm just going to place my zipper, zipper pull down onto the center where I have my center fold push that down to hold I have glue on this side this is the edge that is not folded and see if I had left it longer it would have wrapped back over onto that side and that, that I did not want and then just wrap back to the other side or almost to the other side this is going to actually be our back side so I'd say I have about an eighth of an inch that's not overlapped and then once I do this I am going to go press this with an iron so that I can set this glue stick so I'm not sewing through wet glue and then all I need to do now is just sew across the zipper I have enclosed edges on my sides as well as this part and these edges are open because it's going to be trimmed anyway so it doesn't need to be closed so I'm going to get a zipper that I have already sewn done this step with and then the next step is the end of my fabric on my zipper I want to put that on the 10 inch line And then I just want to cut this off on my zero line. So I'm actually cutting 10 inches from the edge of my fabric tab. And I'm actually going to use a rotary cutter blade that needs to be changed out. But you could use your scissors for this. You could just mark it and then cut that out. So here is my piece of zipper that I will not be using. That's trash. And then I am going to do the exact same process to the other end of the zipper tag. So I am going to go ahead and do that to all of my zippers and I will be back. I'm back and I have actually sewn all seven of my zipper tabs to my zipper ends. And I am only showing you one because what I did was I went ahead and did some prepping steps so that we can continue the video for a little bit. So once I had this zipper tab, I need to take one of the pieces that have the vinyl with that binding piece across the, vi the vinyl. I'm going to actually sew it to this side of the zipper where my zipper pull is to the left when it's closed. So let me turn this around for you. And your zipper it's going to be longer than this piece so what you want to do is you want to center this on top like so and when you do that I'm just holding it so that you know that it's attached to the vinyl and now I can move it out and you'll have a unit that looks like this 
Next, you want to take your pocket for your lining. It was that piece that's 11 by 13. And all I did, this is my 11 inch edge. I wanted to fold in half along my 13 inch edge. So now my 13 inch edge is now six and a half. This edge is still 11. I want this fold here to go on the other side of the zipper and you just want to line it up so that your edges from where you sewed your vinyl piece is even with this piece because they're both cut 11 inches. And then you're just going to stitch that down. Now I used my zipper foot to do this part and I actually used a piece of freezer paper underneath to keep it, I put the paper side of the freezer paper onto the bed of my machine. I did not even butt it up close. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to catch on the bed of my sewing machine. And I used this one piece of paper the entire time and I did not have to rip out any paper. I made sure that I did not stitch through the actual paper. So when that step is sewn, you'll have a piece that looks like this with the vinyl on top and this pocket on the other side. Now you want to go ahead and trim these edges even. Remember that we're going to be sewing with half inch seams, so if you're a little bit off, it's not the end of the world. Just trim this off. And you could use scissors as well. I just happen to have my rotary cutter laying here. And now those edges are even. The next step is a little tricky. You want to hold your vinyl in your hand, pull up one piece of fabric on this side of the vinyl, and you want to wrap the other piece around so that the vinyl is sandwiched between the two right sides of your pocket fabric. And when you do that, you then want to Make sure these areas are secured. So what I do is I use the wonder clips for those and just clip this together. Now at this point, you're gonna go ahead and sew half inch seam to sew this part together and that is exactly what I have here where I have the vinyl sandwich between now it's real important for you to locate your zipper pull when you locate your zipper pull we're going to turn our bag right side out so that that zipper pull is on the outside you don't want to turn the bag so that your zipper pull is on the inside Make sure you see your zipper pull and then proceed to turn the bag right side out. Now you have stitched down vinyl and stitching will perforate vinyl. So be very careful, be gentle as you are working this piece to turn it. Just take your time with it. Very gentle. I'm actually more so pulling on my fabric side more than my vinyl side. And there we go. <laughs> now, you have a seam here where the vinyl is connected to the fabric on the bottom away from the zipper. So on this end, I would I like to just pull this up a little bit so that I can press all of those seam allowances away from the vinyl. So I like to finger press first. Now in the instruction, she's very clear about reducing the heat on your iron. She's also very clear about using a press cloth. I highly recommend that. So once I have finger pressed my piece into place down here, I take this to my ironing board, place it face down on my ironing board, so vinyl side down, and then I press this edge here, and then I push this fabric up and press 
this edge. So I never press in the middle. I'm just pressing this edge. It's not going to be flat, but that's better than having it melt on you. You don't want your vinyl to melt at this stage after you've done all this work. So here is one that is completely done. And now we're ready to finish our lining piece. So remember on the lining, we had sewed our left pocket and this is actually taking the place of our right pocket. So we're going to put this on. We're going to pin this to the edge and we're going to baste. Now, she says that you should have an inch of fabric here. So maybe my half inch seam allowance is too big. I don't have an inch. I have about three quarters. So I am not going to uh, stitch this, baste this down at a quarter. I'm going to baste at one eighth because I'm going to make my seam be one eighth because I do want a little room here for this to fold into the inside of my book. So I am making a little change here. But at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and base down both sides. And they do tell you to base your tops and bottoms. I'm just not going to do that because I'm just trying to save a step since I'm making seven of these. So here's one where I have based the two edges down. I base this side one quarter inch. I base this side one eighth because I'm going to take a half inch seam over here, but only a quarter inch seam on this side. Once you do that, you're going to put your flap. This is still the lining, so you want your lining flap fabric to go right over the top of that pocket. And now you are going to actually stitch. So you'll be stitching a half inch seam. I'm going to actually stitch one quarter inch seam because my pocket appears to be just a tad smaller than what is required. And so again, I just use a few pins. Three pins is pretty good to hold this into place so I can stitch it. And this is one where I have already done the stitching and all I need to do at this point is just press this seam allowance towards the flap. So my pieces here are loose, but in the next step, when we actually go and sew all the way around, I will be pinning these areas down so they will not be loose. But this is it for the lining piece of this. So what I need to do now is I need to catch up all of these pieces that I just showed you so I can be ready to now work on the outside part of this flap. So I'll be back whenever I finish that step. So I'm back and I have all of my lining pieces with the flap. I'm not sure if I told you that before, but of course, you know me, I went on to the next step so that I could show you some more bulk things that we need to do. I'm back and I'm now ready to work on the outside cover. On the outside, your two pieces that have fleece on them, I just want to reiterate that I'm using a quarter of an inch seam here to reduce bulk. And I think it works very well on one that I just tested out. So I would recommend using a quarter inch seam when you sew your flap onto your piece. And on the opposite side, you're going to now use your template you're going to place your template up against your edges and then you're just going to mark so that you can know where to put a little hole for your snaps and then you would do the same thing over here so i've already put a hole on this side i'm using an awl and i just purchased this snap setter kit and i really like it so i will do a separate video on it for you this is not a, will not be a sponsored video, but I have a hole there. And so then I go from the underside, put in my snap. And then on the top side, I place the other piece. And then this setter has a little 
indentation in here and what I do is I just hold the two pieces and just sit it right in that indentation and you'll feel it when it snaps you will feel it when it just sits right in that area and then you just press very easy to do and your snap is in and so I'm just going to repeat that process again I already had the hole over here put this on top make sure I sit this on top of the black cap so that it just sits right in it and then just press. And those are your snaps, very easy to put together. Again, I have a separate video with information on that. Now that we have this piece sewn on here, I, I am actually going to press this seam allowance to the actual outside of the bag, away from the flap. And then on this piece where I had a lot of bulk, I pressed the seam towards the flap. So now when I put these two pieces together, the seams will go in opposite directions. So since that is one of the few critical points, the actual only two matching points on this bag, I will go ahead and put pins in both sides of that. And then I also have this area underneath that isn't sewn down. So I'm just going to remove this pin and then repin it into position. And then pop one in this corner as well. <laughs> Do the same thing on the other side. Now here's the tricky part. We've got this pocket piece that's been inserted where it's got the vinyl on there. And you have two options on how you can handle this. You can just easily use one of your wonder clips put there just to hold those layers. And then I also will add one more pin in the side. Or if you don't have wonder clips, that's fine too. Just make sure you got everything. And what you want to do is you want to pin so that your pin is in the actual seam allowance. Don't have your pin going this direction. That way you don't have to worry about putting a hole in the vinyl that's not going to be covered in the seam. Okay. So now I have it all pinned. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go up maybe two and a half to three inches from the corner. Back stitch. Make sure you back stitch. So one half of an inch all the way around get here leave an opening and i leave a generous opening like say six inches and i'm going to show you why in the next step now it's time for you to turn it right side out before i do that i like to go ahead and just clip a little bit off of the corners so i've done both corners did a little clipping and then up in the curve area i did go ahead and put some clips up there if you want you can um, trim some of this down if you want but it's a composition book cover I didn't think that it was as critical that it needed that and then I left like I said a generous opening so that I could easily flip this turn this inside out
and you may break your back stitching as you're turning but that's not critical either because we're going to st stitch it closed anyway now I will take some time with this and I will go into my corners to make sure that I have all of my corners nice and rounded so I'm just going to use the edge of my scissors since I have fleece in here not push too hard and then just go down into the opposite curves down here and make sure that everything is turned out okay and then once I do that I will go to the iron and I will press my edges flat making sure that I do not press on this vinyl section and so I have And so then at the same time when I'm at the iron, we have a nice generous half inch seam here. So you've got plenty of room where you can press this edge down so that the uh, raw edges are inside nice and flat. Once that, done, once that is done, they tell you to hand sew this section closed. I don't hand sew the section closed. I actually just use my machine I just start and stop stitching about an inch to an inch and a half from the corner and I just close it with a very close stitch on the edge I think that's sufficient for a composition cover we have a template that we use to measure for our corners and it gives you a guide on where you want to put your snaps however I like to make sure that that position is going to be good for me. So I like to install my composition book at this time. And so when you get your composition book, you just want to pull up your pages and then you're going to insert your book in under the flaps. And then you may have to curl back the other end to get it into the flap. So there we go. And then I just like to close the book. And then you can put a pin where your book naturally wants to sit on those snaps. So I can feel those snaps right here on the top so what i am going to do is just stick a pin right in the middle of the flap and i am going to put a little chalk mark And then repeat that process on the other side. Now I'm going to test that with my positioning piece to see if it's indeed in the same position. And on this one, it's actually in a different position. So that's why I always like to check the final snap placement. So we're going to go ahead and insert the snaps on this other piece. And we want our big piece to be on the outside. We want this flat end to be on the outside of our cover. So I'm going to just go ahead and poke a hole. Poke a hole. <laughs> and then I insert the snaps again back through. And then we are going to use our setter again. And I'm just going to put that big part into the setter. I can feel it sit in there and just squeeze. Repeat that on the other side. And so now we are complete. I'm going to go ahead and just close my snaps. And that's pretty cool. And just gorgeous. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is since I'm giving them a book, 
I'm also going to include an ink pen. So the nice thing about it is we've got this fancy little pocket on the back. We can go ahead and just insert our pen and anything else you want to insert and close your book. And these will actually make very neat Christmas gifts as well. So that is the end of this video. Again, I will leave the links to the pattern down in the description box. I did change some things on it, but I left a lot of things the same. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.